Well, off the back of yesterday's episode, unfortunately, there's been a new low for us here at Plymouth Argyle. We lost to Bournemouth in the relegation zone. Then, we got an email about the fans being angry at our tactics. So we're going to change them. Welcome to episode number 18 of the Wayne Train here on Sean Does FM with Plymouth Argyle. I hope you're doing well and coming up today we are going to change our tactics going in to these two games and be fair they should be very winnable ones albeit coming off the back of a defeat to Bournemouth. Not so sure but first up we host bottom of the league Sheffield United albeit under a new manager in Marcelino and off the back of that we take on a Nottingham Forest team that we did beat at home park in the first half of the season hopefully we can do something similar at the city ground so if looking forward to that coming up in today's episode then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but we've played two games off back of yesterday's episode where unfortunately our struggle since the end of december they did continue. We took on Man City in the FA Cup and then Fulham in the Premier League. If you missed that episode, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Unfortunately, he did suffer defeat in that FA Cup fourth round tie thanks to a late goal, which was an own goal just after he grabbed one back through Nicola Elliott. And off the back of that, we got pegged back late against Fulham, one all in a game that, to be fair, wasn't up to a heck of a lot, but unfortunately couldn't hold on and pick up all three points. So it did mean we picked up no wins in the Premier League in the month of January, just that one win in the third round of the FA Cup over Blackburn. And off the back of that, things didn't get a lot better. First up, we took on Brentford. Now, to be fair, we did lose to these guys away in the first half of the season. They are just behind us as well on the Premier League table. As you can see, tried a couple of new faces in the team for this game, but unfortunately, didn't really work. We were the team on the front foot, but unfortunately, just one shot on target. The same for Brentford, but neither team could score a goal. So rather really for us here at Plymouth Argyle, that was a snore draw at nil all. But with Brentford not being too far behind us on the table, we'd take that point. But then we took on a Bournemouth team who, to be fair, going into this game, even though they were down in 18th, apparently they were first on the form table. That's because Lionel Scaloni, the Argentinian World Cup winning manager, has actually done a pretty good job with them throughout the late stages of December and also won most of their games in January. And unfortunately, that did continue when we suffered a 3-1 defeat. Of course, we bet them by that scoreline on the opening day of the season, but this game, it wasn't too one-sided, but unfortunately, we just put the ball in the back of the net once, and even then, that was a consolation goal in the 94th minute. Prior to that, Simeone with a first half double, and then Philip Billing put it to bed with 10 minutes to go, so that was a pretty poor performance, probably our worst one so far this season, considering the opposition, albeit, as you could see before, they are actually surging up the table in terms of points a bit, even though their league position doesn't quite suggest that. But off the back of that, we did get some bad emails about the fans being angry with our tactics. Because of that, that is something that is going to change going in to today's episode. Definitely think in the future, we might bring back that attacking gag and press might even be later in the season if the one that we do switch to now doesn't quite work as long as that previous one did. But for now, we're going to try and change things to turn the tide here at Plymouth Argyle, but it does mean we've slipped down the table just a little bit. Now, Brentford, they have gone above us, albeit they have played one more game than us. They are three points clear of us, but if we win this next one against Sheffield United, which you'd hope would be the case with those guys rock bottom of the Premier League, we will go back up to eight, only one point behind Newcastle, albeit that could change as well, as they will be playing the same time as us, and they take on that Bournemouth team, but we are now in ninth on 37 points. Hopefully in today's episode, can surge our way back up the table and hopefully into a fight for some European football where we were come the latter stages of December off the back of a very good month before all those goalkeeping injuries, which have really turned the tide for us here, it feels like, at Plymouth Argyle. But we are changing tactics going in to today's episode. And the one that we are going to go with is a vertical ticky tacker We were suggested between a Gagan Press vertical ticky tacker and also just the regular ticky tacker I'm a bit more of a fan of the vertical tiki taka. I think that goes back to my series back with Volsung of the Icelandic Builder Nation that ended up working quite well, but I am adapting this quite a bit to what usually would be the case just in terms of not telling our guys 
to be expressive in possession, but apart from that, the rest of it does look quite usual, also in transition and out of possession. But the main thing that is different, we are keeping all the player roles from that previous tactic because we did do transfers based on that. So I think that's probably a good idea. Try and keep these roles in for this tactic. We'll see how it does get on. But to be fair, today's episode might not be the best gauge of how this might get on against some of the better teams in the Premier League because we are taking on some stragglers. And first up, that does include bottom of the table. Sheffield United, we bet these guys earlier in the season. That one was away from home, you'd like to think. That would be the case here, albeit off the back of our recent form now, seven games without a win in the Premier League. That could be interesting. And also, Marcelinho has recently joined them. So they could be here getting a little bit of new manager bounce as well. But hopefully, that won't be the case. And we can pick up a win the first time in a long time. That would be the case. As Arsenal beat Man United, that's actually quite useful for us. That might mean if we win this game, still within touching distance of them, albeit I believe. They are in the Carabao Cup final against Brighton. So that might be a way that they can get European football without having to worry too much on their finishing league position. And thankfully going to this first game of today's episode, we are at full strength. And there again, you can see how we're doing things now with that vertical ticky decker. But first choice, starting 11, just one change though on the bench. There's that Phillips is in for Tom Bischoff. Unfortunately, he's picked up a little bit of an injury. will be out probably for both games in today's episode. We'll just not press the other player, our assistant manager, did recommend that to be the case for and hopefully can get back on track and win our first game since late December in the save the last time we took on Fulham that mad 4-3 game where Mike Cooper got injured celebrating the Ben Wayne goal since then things have been going a little bit pear-shaped here at Plymouth Argyle but hopefully this attacking vertical tiki ticker I'm going to stick on that attacking mentality because it certainly kicked us into life with the Gagan press at the start of December but unfortunately for some reason that Gagan press on attack now not working nearly as well. Off the back of that Bournemouth loss in particular, that was very disappointing. Felt like that was a game where we could start to turn things around with that tactic. It was not the case. So let's see what the vertical tiki tacker can do here against bottom of the league. Sheffield United there. You can see the lovely green roof at home park. But hopefully we can pick up three points for the first time in a long time. It's a slightly lower tempo tactic than the Gagan press. And also passing directness is shorter as well. So it's going to be interesting to see here how we do play in this first game of today's episode. If it doesn't work, that would be a bit of a disaster because I'd expect this to work against the team, especially the calibre of Sheffield United on bottom of the league. But Kesler Hayden is on the ball down that right-hand side, plays that one back to Williams. And we start to go 40 furious to the Wayne train. Kesler Hayden tries to get him behind there, but unfortunately that pass from Wayne O can't quite find him. But thankfully from that clearance, we do get the ball back. Whitaker plays that one forward to the Wayne train. He looks behind him, goes back to Graves. Now Buckley through there for Callum Wright. Tight angle will look to square this one. Picks out the Wayne train, but unfortunately, good block there by a Sheffield United defender. But thankfully, it does look like here we're keeping the ball a lot better than we were in that gag and press tactic. That's something that this should help us out in is keeping position because that's something that usually we were losing. And with that gag and press tactic, the other team usually would have more of the ball. Hopefully with a tiki taka style or a vertical tiki taka style, I should say, that will not be the case. But a highlight now, 10 minutes in it. It's Whitaker on the edge of the box. Tries to square that one for the Wayne train. But then Lunan, I think it was, comes up with a decent save. It goes back into the mix of the Farias with a shot. But yet again, it does get blocked. Maybe Marcelino here is parking the bus just a little bit. But an encouraging start, albeit now a free kick here for the opposition. Reese Williams there tries to take a man out. Kind of gets away with it. And thankfully... I think there Cooper did come up with a save from point blank range to so a good chance there for Sheffield United to get in front. But thankfully, Mike Cooper comes up. I believe that was with a good save. Will be apparently no shots on target for either team. So maybe that wasn't the case. But so far, well and truly the team in this game who are on the front foot. But unfortunately, nothing to show for it as of yet. Hopefully that might change going into halftime. Otherwise, maybe need to adjust some things, but as long as we're on the front foot, hopefully we'll get on top of these guys at some stage during these 90 minutes. But unfortunately, that was all she wrote for the first half. Definitely encouraging, albeit Sheffield United did come back into that one quite late in the first half. And in the end, their stats actually in terms of shots and shots on target do look slightly better than ours. We are going to make one change here at halftime. Wayno's not playing very well at the moment. It has to be said, a 6.2 good Johnson can come on for him, hopefully. He can pick up a goal like he did late in that prior Bournemouth game. Hopefully this time, do it a little bit earlier. We'll tell the guys that we just need to hit the target a bit better, be better in front of goal, and hopefully 
that will make sure they do that. And we can pick up three points in this one, an early highlight here in the second half. Interesting to note that Sheffield United here are picking up a lot of yellow cards, maybe a benefit for us keeping the ball so much. will be a poor pass there and a chance for them to play out from back. will be a good interception there from Cullen Wright. And now he gets in behind tight angle, but beats Lunan in goal. And early stages of the second half, we finally get another shot on target and we score the first goal of today's episode. Hopefully the first of many with this vertical tiki taka style. To be fair, we are the fourth best attacking team in the Premier League. So that wasn't the issue with that Gagan press. I think it was our defence. We were smack bang middle of the pack for our defence, the 10th best team. So that definitely needs to improve. And hopefully that will be the case with this vertical tiki taka. But thankfully Callum Wright, his first goal in a little while. Another player like the Wayne Train who has been struggling. Now Buckley there with a free kick. He was looking for the top right corner. But Lunin comes up with a decent save to keep it at 1-0 in our favour. And a short corner here. It looks like we're going to take Farias. Tries to play that one to Whitaker, but unfortunately, we do lose out on the ball. There might be a chance here for Sheffield United to get a goal back. This would feel a bit harsh if we don't pick up all three points from this one based on our general dominance, based on stats. But thankfully, that pass is a poor one, goes out for a throw-in, and we are still 1-0 in front. And now down the other side of the field, we have a throw-in, albeit deep inside our own half. But thankfully, make our way now into the opposition one. But we find good Johnson there, and he's a bit loose on the ball. And now a chance here for Sheffield United do something it looks like down the left hand side. McBurney, good short passing. And now, boys, he gets in behind, but thankfully takes on that shot from a wee way out, albeit it does force Cooper into a save. And it is still 1 0, thankfully. But Sheffield United here are threatening to grab a goal back. They go far post. Thankfully, Gibson does win that race for the ball. And then, good hitter away there. I think that was from Buckley and Farias. Might get a chance to do something for us here on the counter attack. As a man inside, he finds him in Cullum right. But unfortunately, that ball fall for good Johnson just had a little bit too much on it. And Lunin can claim it. But shortly off the back of that, yet another highlight. And we are on the ball yet again. Now Farias plays one over the top there for Morgan Whitaker. Down that right hand side. Takes his time a little bit on the ball before burning his man. Makes his way inside the box. But unfortunately, takes on the shot himself. And somehow, it's a goal kick. Not a good option there from Morgan Whitaker from a tight angle. Still 1-0, but we are definitely the team on the front foot here based on the highlights that we are seeing. And off the back of that previous chance they did blow, Morgan Whitaker is down to a red heart. Ian Pervader can come on for him. To be fair, everyone else out there is pretty good stamina-wise. That's something that shouldn't be too much of an issue for the rest of our Premier League season. Now we're no longer in any cup competitions. Mostly we long gaps in between our games. So that's good. We can put out our best 11 or most games here at Plymouth Argyle. But hopefully... We can find a cushion goal here just to make sure we do pick up all three points. And now a couple more players are down to red hearts. I think Daniel Phillips will bring on here for John Buckley to be fair. Both our midfield subs in this case are better in that ball winning midfielder role. But I think Phillips can do a decent job here probably in either the game time more than Rafael Mamas. We'll just cheat here and see if the star ratings are any different if any of these guys do come on the field. But we'll give Phillips the game time seeing as he does look like He's in need of it more. And also, Tony Springer can come on for the goal scorer. And Callum Wright, just over 10 minutes left. And we are still up by one goal to nil. Also, might be worth here chucking Jacob Graves on to support. That's something I am tinkering with doing with this tactic. Just to see if it gives us a bit more going forward. Which could be useful if it's not quite as productive in front of goal as the Gagan press was. And shortly off the back of that, a couple more players down to Red Hearts. One of our defenders is Kane Kessler Hayden going okay. But even led can come on for him and hopefully we can find a way here to put this game to be 1-0 would be an okay result xg wise we should really have two goals in this one and against bottom of the league would be nice if we could grab a cushion goal and off the back of a free kick it's a very simple routine and somehow good Johnson gets in behind Daniel Phillips I think there picks up his first assist at Plymouth Argyle and good Johnson scores another late goal but this time it will be a winning one to make it 2-0 or I believe that's six minutes of added time that will be in this game but that is pretty sloppy defending that from Sheffield United we just go straight down the middle from a free kick nothing even over the top it was just a couple of simple passes along the ground good Johnson puts it away in the bottom right corner and there's another highlight here before full time but hopefully that's the goal to make sure we pick up our first win in eight games in the Premier League chance therefore I think that's all there. From a header, but it just goes over the bar. It is still 2-0 in our favour. 
that is how it will finish so thankfully a pretty dominant performance with that vertical ticky ticker certainly the team on the front foot for most of that game everyone out there played pretty well as well apart from the Wayne train which is a bit of a concern hopefully that can turn around soon because that could be a bit of an issue he hasn't been doing too well off the back of picking up that December player of the month in the Premier League but thankfully it's our first win in a long time hopefully that will boost the confidence here at Plymouth Argyle even if it did come against the team who are really struggling in the Premier League this season we are back on track somewhat with a 2-0 win there and unfortunately that does mean that we are still in ninth on the Premier League table because Brentford they picked up a draw against West Ham but to be fair we do still have that game in hand only three points now behind Man United in that last European qualifying spot we'll come back shortly and hopefully pick up some more points but this time away from home against the better team in Nottingham Forest. So it took us until mid-February but we finally picked up our first win of 2025 in the Premier League there at home against Sheffield United. Hopefully we can do something similar here as we do take on Steve Cooper's Nottingham Forest. They're down in 16th so on paper this also looks like a very winnable game but this one is away from home. For fellow New Zealanders just going to go searching here to see if Chris Wood is still at the club. We didn't actually play him the last time we took these guys on so not sure if he is there. And indeed he is not, so unfortunately no New Zealand versus New Zealand clash up front in this game. Chris Wood versus the Wayne Train. I'll just try and see where he did actually go here, the big wood man. And that didn't take too long, it was just going to the start of this new season. Rather ironically, he's gone to the team I'm managing on stream at the moment. In Montpellier for £3.2 million, so that's an interesting one. Maybe we should scout him to be the backup to the Wayne Train. That could be interesting here. A double New Zealand force up front, albeit at the moment is out with some sprain knee ligaments, but unfortunately no Chris Wood for this one, but it should be a game where hopefully we can pick up a win, especially considering we bet these guys 2-0 earlier in the season. It was a goal from Ben Wayne as well as Nicola Ilyev, albeit that was in the middle of our really good patch of form in December. Hopefully though, we're back on track off the back of that 2-0 win over Sheffield United, but no doubt this will be a lot tougher, even though these guys aren't that much further up the Premier League table. And selection wise things are nice and easy for the second game of today's episode exactly the same as we were for that first one. Daniel Phillips still on the bench as Tom Bischoff is still out with an injury. Hopefully we'll be back for our next game off the back of this which is against Brighton who to be fair actually a lot further down the Premier League table than I expected them to be. They were right up there early stages of the season up near one of those European spots where I think what happened is Roberto De Zerbi left to go to Tottenham for some reason even though they're also down in the bottom half of the table but Brighton since that change happened have really slid down and they are now a team somewhat under threat of being relegated this season that could be a very interesting situation because Brighton usually kind of a mid upper tier team in football manager I'm noticing with other people safe so that could be an interesting situation coming out of this one here with Plymouth Argyle but there's our team as I said before exactly the same as it was for that first game today, that 2-0 win over Sheffield United. Hopefully we can back that up and grab something here away from home to be fair with that Gagan press. We weren't losing too many games. We're actually picking up a lot of draws, which was a bit frustrating, but our form certainly could have been a lot worse. But hopefully with this vertical ticky tagger we can start to pick up a few more wins for a little while anyway and maybe go back to it if it starts to fade away form-wise like the Gagan press did off the back of late December. But unfortunately, poor pass the early and Nottingham Forest do get a chance. Callum hudson Adoy gets a header off and somehow that one hasn't gone over the line and Gibson can clear it. That was a very close run thing. Unfortunately, goal line technology from that angle, not too useful, but we'll just trust there that that one didn't quite make its way over the line. We get away with one there early and it is still nil all here at the city ground, but that is a bit of an iffy start. Hopefully not a sign of things to come. Otherwise, might need to reevaluate whether this vertical tiki taka is the right one for us here at Plymouth Argyle because hopefully a decent tactic that works would be enough for us to grab something here against a team in the bottom half like Nottingham Forest but so far they have been the team who are on the front foot and it's now Felipe who makes his way forward yet again looking for hudson Doy at that far post we clear it but only as far as Bucker down that left hand side tries to square that one it comes off the post and then we clear it there through Adam Randall so about halfway through the first half and so far all the action that we've seen has been in favour of Forrest. They put this one into the mixer from a corner. Thankfully, we deal with that danger briefly. Thriller there 
with a shot from outside the box, but thankfully that's blocked from Randall, but it does mean they'll get another chance here from a corner all over us at this stage. Hopefully we can hold the ball off the back of this corner and start to just calm things down, but thankfully we deal with that danger and the player there in Christie who took the corner gets it back from an offside position, but unfortunately at the moment just being starved of the ball and now Dia in lots of space inside the box, but thankfully that one comes off the woodwork so far that's been saving us here at the city ground and it's still nil all but Nottingham Forest really should be on top of this game five shots to none but thankfully only one on target it's been a pretty poor first half from us here at Mathago albeit now we get a shot off we do seem to be a team that takes a little while to get going in games I did think that might just be a game press thing but maybe it's a general thing but now we're on the attack from a corner of our own Randall there with a shot but unfortunately it also gets blocked, but now Gibson inside the box tries to square that one for Farias, but unfortunately probably just took a second too long on that ball, and we don't quite find him. And now a chance here for Nottingham Forest to do something on the counter-attack. Fula makes his way into the box. He looks to square this one. Far post Cooper doesn't go down and get it, and Ryan Christie will bundle that one home. And unfortunately, we get done somehow on the counter-attack. That's the weirdest goal considering so far in this game. Nottingham Forest have been all over us, but unfortunately couldn't quite link up there with Farias down the other end in a pretty similar situation, to be fair. And then down the other, it's Frilla there who squares it for Christie at the far post. Unfortunately, Mike Cooper tries to go down and collect that, doesn't quite reach it, and it's a 1-0 lead here for Nottingham Forest. But to be fair, based on how this game's been going, can't argue with that too much and only a few minutes shy of half time. There's one more highlight, and it might be in our favour from a free kick, starting to creep our way into the opposition half. Gibson back on the ball, though. Graves down that left-hand side, starts to make his way forward, albeit thinks better of it. Now Gibson plays that forward to buck the good ball forward to the Wayne train, just tries to shuggle someone off there and makes his way into the box. Unfortunately, loses out on the ball, albeit interesting stuff going on there down that far side, but Forrest are back in position. Now Gibbs White is on the ball, plays that to Christie down that right-hand side. Burns his man there and plays it back in to Gibbs White. Now, Nico Williams down that right-hand side. He's got some decent pace. And I would have fought there. Would have put the ball into the mix of it. Now, they're back on the attack. And it's a shot there from hudson Adoy. Yet again, he hits the woodwork. That's twice for him now. Been unlucky so far here, Forrest, to not go 2-0 up. Because I've hit the woodwork plenty of times. But that was a poor first half. And a couple of players out there not doing too well. In fact, there's only one actually below a 6.5. That was Facundo Farias. Nikola Ilyev can come on for him, but that was a pretty poor first half from us in the second game of today's episode, not encouraging for the vertical ticky tacker we'll give the guys a bit of a rev up, and hopefully they can perform better in the second half, to be fair, position-wise, actually dominating the ball, but just not doing anything with it, which is concerning, hopefully that will change as we get things back underway, and first highlight might be in our favour, Gibson starts to make his way forward, not very far, picks out Graves, now Cullum Wright, Loose touch. Now, unfortunately, Nico Williams back on the ball here for Forrest. Now, a tackle there, and thankfully, the ball finds its way back to Mike Cooper and goal. But hopefully, we can get this game back to all square nice and early in the second half and start to build some momentum off the back of that. Cooper will pump this one deep. Ilyev, nice ball forward there in the Wayne train. Does just get in behind him. Buries it bottom right corner for the first time in a little while. The Wayne train scores a goal. In the Premier League, and it's a big one as well. Hopefully, it can get us on the front foot a bit more in this game. Makes it one all into beefy in Nottingham Forest. You can feel a bit dirty about that because so far they've been well and truly on the front foot in this game. But nice header for there from Ilyev off the bench for the second game. The Wayne train does just shrug off a man there and get inside the box. Beats Odyssey's in goal and puts that one away. The Wayne train back on the score sheet. So at least that's one good thing from today's episode, or at least the second game. If we don't go on and pick up a win, but that's a goal that might give us a chance here to pick up three points, we'll be at corner there for Forrest, but thankfully we deal with that danger Randall with a diving header, but they are back on the attack here, Felipe, the ball there finds Sangari, Buckley they're a bit loose on the ball, and Forrest, they do keep position now, it's Williams, plays that one to Fula, who got the assist for that first goal, back to Felipe, their centre back, now Sangari, nice ball for Nico Williams, doing a pretty similar job to what we've seen before, from Kane, here's the Hayden. Good shot there looking for that bottom left corner, but Mike Cooper comes up with a good save. And thankfully, a bit of encouragement off the back of that, and that highlight does stop before that next corner, albeit only a few seconds later. 
it is a free kick to Forrest, and Frula is on the ball now. Gibbs White starts to make his way forward down that left-hand side. Somehow Hudson Adoy does get in behind, and he buries that one inside the far post, and we weren't locked up in this one for long, only about 10 or 15 minutes in Nottingham Forest. They do grab a 2-1 lead to be fair. Hudson Adoy definitely deserved that goal so far. Been a bit unlucky hitting the post a couple of times in that first half, but Gibbs White there plays that ball forward. Somehow Hudson Adoy does get in behind that right-hand side of our defence and puts that one away inside the far post. And unfortunately, we might be losing to Nottingham Forest. So maybe need to evaluate this tactic yet again, potentially for away games with a couple of players down to 6.4s. John Buckley, I think this time we might bring on Rafael Lamas in his place. And Morgan Whitaker, Ian Perveda can come on for him. And to be fair, Callum Wright also not doing too well on a 6.5. Tony Springett can come on for him. So a couple of subs here in terms of attack with around 20 minutes left. And hopefully we can grab a goal back in the dying stages of this game to make sure we come away with something from this one. Albeit, don't know if we actually deserve it. Nottingham Forest have definitely been the better team in this game. And they might get a chance here to put this one to bed with 15 minutes left to throw down their right-hand side. Now, Gibbs White on the ball yet again. Very dangerous player for Forrest. They play that one towards the far side. I think here's the Hayden there. Went out to claim that. Didn't quite get there. They play a nice ball forward there for Dia, but thankfully Cooper reacts just in time and we get the ball back. And hopefully here he can link up with someone nice and short, albeit was looking like there. He might try and pump that one long. He looks for a mask, but then a poor pass. And now a chance here for Forrest to get us. Yet again, Dyer does get in behind. We'll put that one top right corner. I think he might have just been offside. Hopefully that's the case anyway. Otherwise, that will probably be all she wrote in this one. With 12 minutes left, they make it 3-1. But thankfully, he was offside. So we do get away with that one. Poor pass there from a master B fear. Probably a bit harsh. Not bringing on Phillips off the back of that assist that he did get in that previous Sheffield United game. But off the back of that, a couple more players are down to red hearts. We've got one more sub. Yet again, we'll bring on Ethan Laird for a tied Kane Kessler Hayden. Also, we'll chuck Jacob Graves onto attack, Ian Pervader onto attack, and also we'll put Adam Randall onto support as that ball wing midfield. So our usual change of roles when we are chasing a game here at Plymouth Argyle, but this time with the vertical tiki taka instead of the Gagan press, maybe. Should have gone positive for this one instead of attacking, but we'll see what happens from a highlight with only a few minutes left. Unfortunately, we lose the ball there, but then good header, I believe that was from Reese Williams, and Mamas with a nice ball over the top for Tony Springett, who will put that one away, albeit he was in a lot of space down that left-hand side, so not too sure if he was onside or not. We'll wait here for VAR, hopefully. It does get awarded, and thankfully it does wrap up Mamas coming off the bench and also picking up an assist, so thankfully not too much difference there between him and Daniel Phillips in the two games in today's episode, and spring it from a tight angle, does get him behind, and put that one past Odysseys, and yet again we come back from a goal down, make it two all, he is just onside there too, so thankfully we're back all square in this game in Nottingham Forest, yet again we'll feel a bit hard done by, off the back of that, we might just chuck those wing backs onto support just to make sure we don't lose this game, because that would be frustrating, just hopefully make sure we're a bit more solid defensively, for the last couple of minutes of this game, only four minutes of added time, which to be fair, isn't too long in football manager this year, but that wasn't a great performance. But thankfully, we do come away with a point from the city ground. Certainly feels like could still be a bit of stuff to work on with this tactic, because turn over Sheffield United, truth be told, not that great. And we did leave it a bit late as well. And also, two all against 16th place Forest. It's not a bad result, but certainly could be better but hopefully the more that we use this tactic and also train it, we will just get a bit more used to it and start to go a bit better. Also not too sure if those roles that we're using are the best for it, because that's just a bit of a funny thing I'm doing, considering that we have been using those roles all season long. It means that tactical familiarity shouldn't be too bad, but it's an okay result second up in today's episode. Four points from those two games that we did play. We back up that win over Sheffield United with a two-all draw at Nottingham Forest. So thankfully back on track somewhat in those two games. In today's episode, a decent win first up, 2-0 over bottom of the league. Sheffield United backed up with a point at Nottingham Forest, albeit with those guys being in 16th. Maybe should be aiming to do a bit better, but they were definitely on the front foot in that game. So I think we'll take a point when we can get it and hopefully can continue to pick up enough points to keep ourselves in a European fight throughout the remainder of the Premier League season with only a couple of episodes left until the end of this week, which is when I think we will end the second season 
of the safe we are now up in eighth just above Brentford based on goal differential not too far behind Man United albeit they do have a game in hand which they could make the most of just going to check who they are playing in that game in hand will go forward to the Sunday they're not playing then they're not playing for a little while Man United's not too sure what's going on there that might actually be because they're taking part in that Carabao Cup final we'll just go check what they are up to and indeed they do take on Brighton on the Sunday so that's why they've still got a game in hand it'll be interesting to see how they get on there because if they win that I think that's going to guarantee them Conference League football for next season also we take on Brighton in our next game as well but that will be interesting to see if Man United can pick up the first trophy this season or if it will be a Brighton team who are struggling a little bit in the Premier League but decent results in today's episode still might be a bit of work to do on that vertical ticky tacker I'll adjust that before we do come back potentially for tomorrow's episode but if you enjoyed today's one then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well we'll come back tomorrow we do have a pretty winnable game it looks like on paper next up against Brighton who are now down in 16th so they're in the same position that Nottingham Forest just were but that one is at home park then a tricky one we take on Liverpool now to be fair I'm going to be very tempted to go back to the Gagan Press for that game considering we bet them 6-1 at home park with that attacking Gagan Press early stages of December but that's definitely a tricky game against top of the league at Anfield then we take on Tottenham and West Ham and we might come back in the early stages of April off the back of our youth intake we'll see if we get a good goalkeeper in that one that would be nice a couple of episodes ago but we'll come back take on an Aston Villa team doing a really good job in the save up in third on the Premier League table don't think they're actually close enough to be in a title fight but still they are pretty much locked into being in Europe in some form next season uh, Aston Villa under Unai Emery and off the back of that we'll take on Newcastle a team in and around us in the race for potentially that last European qualifying spot out of the Premier League this season so those could be two big games coming up in tomorrow's episode and off the back of that we'll finish up the season and in amongst our last couple of games we do host Manchester United that could be another big one as well but we'll come back tomorrow take on Villa at home park and Newcastle at St James so until then thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and I'll see you then cheers <laughs>